Welcome to the Agent Upgrade Podcast with your hosts, Jasmine Cronedan and Alan Corey, where we learn the strategies of top producing real estate agents so you have the tools to upgrade your own real estate career. It's Agent Upgrade with Alan and Jasmine. And Jasmine, I, every time I see you, you got a different backdrop. Uh, where, where in the world has Carmen San Diego brought you now? <laughs> so we are in Barcelona. We have been here for a couple of weeks, I guess, and um, it's been absolutely wonderful. Um, it's the nice thing about if you are going to be traveling the world and working, which is what we're doing. Um, Barcelona is great because they eat dinner really, really late. So you can get your work done and then still hit <laughs> hit all your friends for like, oh, yeah, I'll meet you for dinner at 1030. It's awesome. So <laughs> so that's yeah, very yeah. practical. And um, tomorrow we head out to Serbia because we're going to go see my dad. We, you know, with us, as if you guys listened to the last episode, my husband and I, we tested positive for weeks and weeks and weeks. We couldn't go to Serbia because you had to have a, a negative test to get into Serbia. And so finally, Serbia lifted all of their testing stuff. We're testing negative, And now we're going to go see my dad, which I haven't seen my dad for three years now. So, oh, wow. Yeah. That, yeah. That, that, that's so, good. Yeah. And yeah, so if you didn't mention last episode, you're stuck in Europe against your will, uh, but you are making the most of it. And <laughs> making now, the finally, most of it. <laughs> yeah. So was the trip to Serbia always in the plans? And, and no, uh, no, no, okay. no, it wasn't. But I mean, like, it's really hard to be like, you know, literally like an hour flight away from my dad and not go to see him. Um, but uh, so, yes, yeah, so we decided to now since we've been here for so long, uh, we might as well just go see that. And being in Serbia is like, that's my home. So that's like right. really home away from home. So like, you know, we just kind of settle in and it's not so much like when you're traveling, it's a little bit different. You're like living in Airbnbs and you're eating at restaurants. But once we're home, it's like back to back to normal just a different language for my husband <laughs> for me <Yeah>. it's home <laughs> well i think you what what um you you're an international person and have cultivated international friends you've been able to have this extended trip uh which what started to be 10 days and it's going to stretch out to about 60 days because of just being forced against your will but you've been able to make it work because you've got friends in all these countries that you're going like you're staying at friends houses or empty apartments of, of friends yeah. and you're yeah. not like going uh, and broke paying hotel fees like no uh, no yeah. no exactly exactly so it's 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 really useful to have friends um in many different places and we i feel like uh where we've made so many more friends and it's very different you know especially when you're in europe like you just meet people from everywhere right like Everybody is speaking a different language from somewhere. Everybody's uh, trans transpassing and um, in in some form or fashion. And uh, we always make friends with people. Like literally, like ho we hook up on Instagram. Like I have gotten so many more Instagram friends since we've gotten here because you know, like the guy that was our rafting tour guide seven years ago in Montenegro is getting married this weekend. You know what I mean? Like. <laughs> That's perfect. So we keep track of everyone. <laughs> yeah. Well, well thought, it's very yeah. So, so speaking of new friends and, and, and meeting new new people and new locations, our, our guest today is from Scottsdale, Arizona, which will be our um we've got a couple first uh today, uh Jasmine. I'm not sure if you're aware. First, first Arizona agent. Um nice. and this is not any old agent. Like this is uh Jennifer Wayner, who um leads a team of 40 agents, four zero. Wow. That this will be our biggest uh team leader. Uh very impressive uh which is um why she's also writing a book right now to be come out about how, how she grew her team, the systems and processes related to it. So uh the real estate uh, agent rena renaissance agent we'll, we'll, we'll get the 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 rundown from her uh shortly. Um and uh you know I I also things that I'm experiencing here in my market is a lot of buyer fatigue. Um, uh, mm -hmm. that, you know, buyers losing out, um, bidding war after bidding war, uh, interest rates going up a little bit. And then they're saying, Hey, I want to sit on the sidelines. I want to wait, which, um, I, I think you and I know that's, that's not the right approach. You know, it, it's, things are just going to get more expensive and, uh, waiting is, is 
is usually never the right move. Um, but uh, I, I want to pick her brain, uh, Jennifer's brain, about that and how she if she's experiencing that at all in the Arizona market, um, and what she instructs her team on, on how to handle that. Um, but this is a person who's been in the business 18 years, has seen it ups and downs. Um, you know, back the crashes, you know, and the rises. And if, if you know, to my eyes, if if you've kind of survived a down market and you're still like. In, in in the business like you, you you know what you're doing and so i uh, would love to get her advice on on people who maybe I, I don't think we have a crash in us but you never know but you know mm. things that maybe we can prepare for we do have a tight market and that it's hard to get things under contract so um that's another sort of badge of honor to stay in this business through these sort of um very extreme extreme markets so uh i'm very excited yeah. to have jennifer join us today me too me too all right let's bring her in uh welcome jennifer namaste thank you for having me and uh, <laughs> in barcelona over there celebrating with you <laughs> <laughs> we could make it to dinner it, we've got another few hours till dinner hop on a plane and <laughs> come hang out <laughs> over and i'm there <laughs> <laughs> i love it so uh yes. Yeah. So Jennifer, tell us maybe a little bit of your backstory. How did you get started in real estate? What was the, the catalyst here? College was almost uh, it just always a backup plan, but I was managing, like going to, to getting my business degree, um, which has like helped served me like little to none uh, throughout um, this. Um, I was pricing out tanning salons because my daughter was three or four. I knew I wanted to work for myself. I was waiting tables, you know, I was making probably a hundred grand a year because I was, you know, I do, I'm, when I go in, I go all in and I was, <laughs> make, you know, had a, but I, you know, lived in Huntington Beach. It was expensive. I was going to college. I, anytime I had, I would spend with my daughter and um, I was pricing out tanning salons, just seeing what I wanted to do. My, um, my daughter's father, who's now my husband, we've been together 25 years, four kids. He, uh, he had friends that were flipping homes out there. And I'm like, oh, you could buy two homes. And both homes are the same, um, both mortgages are, are the same price as our rent in Huntington Beach. And I'm a capitalist, like in my heart, but like, I'm an artist in my heart, but I'm like, I, I've always been a capitalist. It's in my blood. And uh, I don't know where I came from because I don't have a single capitalist in my family. You know, it's kind of <laughs> sad. But, uh, you know, so I'll go to my mom and dad for wise counsel on my P&Ls. But uh, <laughs> you know, I do, um, the industry started, uh, you know, I put Craigslist up. Craigslist ads up there. I'd get like 10 clients. I'd do a good job. And I'm like, oh, wow. You know, I could just help people and like make money like this. And I we got started investing. We got, uh, thought it was Donald Trump back then. We were building like 10 luxury homes. Within two years in the business, I was building like 10 luxury homes. I had multifamily homes, single family homes. I was also, you know, selling 50, 60, 70 homes a year on my own. And you took this partnership, I guess, with your husband. And then what, what was the moment where you're like, I need to grow this team. Like, I can't do this all myself. Uh, when, when you were like, let's. I know exactly what that yeah. moment was. Okay. Um, actually, my husband just inspired me to get my license. This has okay. been, this has been my team. Um, he would work in the investor capacity and we worked together and kids, but um, I got in, in October of 03. Um, I was getting calls and on Thanksgiving. So just the very next month. And I'm like, literally, I, so I, I have to have some my, my time alone, you know what I mean? And I am not a 911 call center, but, you know, I'm, I'm like, sometimes I, I am a lazy person inside trying to find a, la a way to get out, which I haven't found yet. So, but uh, it, I knew the clients deserved to have a call back. I knew clients deserved to have the service of the, out, of the, out of the hours that I personally could dedicate to them. So I got an assistant in, in um, November. So November, December, within two months. Now I didn't know what oh, I was wow. doing. Yeah. Um, I like was like, woo, you know, like, you know, is this does this work? And it wasn't what I would suggest for the framework today, but it did work for the time being. Um, but uh, and when the market shifted, I got a, vir a virtual assistant. You know, I locked myself in a closet and made like videos for eight hours. It was terrible, but I every mm -hmm. tutorial. Thing I needed them done. I got it documented and loaded into a YouTube playlist because this was like. God, oh, six, oh, seven, oh, eight, you know, it's a long time ago. Um, but, uh, you know, always I'd have canned responses in my Gmails. I'd have automatic, whatever technology or systems I can have, because 
God knows, like mm -hmm. I have ADD, it doesn't everybody, but I just have the OCD component too. So um, it's uh, it was those systems and the structure. So I like, you know, and having boundaries because if you sacrifice your life to your clients and your, you, your kids hate you, what is life for, you know? So um, honoring your boundaries with your clients, setting expectations up front. Um, I did leverage off systems and people and it's uh, sometimes it's a fear. Yeah. I think agents have to get over like, Oh, I hired a bad person or, Oh, what if I hire a bad person or, Oh, it's a hundred thousand dollar investment. You have to look at your dollar per hour. And at a certain time, you're just trading time for money. What is your highest and best use? Because, you know, in, our, in my team, I have a whole psychology profiles on everybody. But I could see as a collective where we're strong and weak. But look at yourself where you're strong and weak and where, where you want to spend your time, your highest and best use of time. Because you're going to find that other match and a quick, uh, quick book uh, suggestion for any new agent or any agent that does not have a system in place. Bibles are like traction and rocket fuel. I don't get any money for saying that, but it is uh, two books that will uh, really rocket fuel will tell you the story of who you need as your integrator, like your most important person that can help fuel your business. But uh, traction is how, how you would run your business. And I actually have traction on my bedside table right yeah, now. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cutting edge. I have like, I, I've gifted over 10,000 books last year. Um, I read about a book a week, so I am pretty. Uh, I, I'm writing a book, so I yeah, love. Yeah, I hear this. So, so you, you're you're very pro systems, and I think can you tell us a little bit about your book and what that's about, and and what you what you're going to yeah. teach that comes out. Yeah, Run yeah. The real estate agent was inspired the fact that we truly are in the Renaissance. We are in the industrial. Sorry, we we are in the cognitive revolution right now. We have we have so much information out there; it's almost too much. Um, but right now, it's being a master of your own emotions and a master of yourself. That is where the game is. Um, so the Renaissance Real Estate uh, Publishing with Forbes, it's done. It's how to unlock the systems of the Renaissance Real Estate Agent, how to unlock the art of systems in your business to create your own extraordinary business or sorry, your own real estate business. I should know the title. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've made that mistake so, uh, before on my books, yes. But it's with Forbes, and I have put my blood, sweat, and tears. I did have um, help with uh, my ghostwriter, but it was a lot of my own writing words. It was everything I've shared over 18 years. I share my fails in there. I share like what I failed at, what I win, what I know, the tribes. But it, it, it really breaks it down to who you need to be. What do you really want? It goes into all of the basic foundations, but also how to create a business that is a business, that is a legacy business, that is, when you look at, I have the spiritual wheel, at the, we call the visual wheel with, you know, your spirituality box, your money, your work, your, your love, your friends. And we break that down and we look at our, when we're coaching people, we're looking at their visual wheels. Because if you're all work and you're not balanced, you're not going to be good for your clients or yourself. You know, Albert mm -hmm. Einstein and Leonardo and she like preach about rest and recovery. So, you know, you're going to have to leverage off people and, and you can't be one, you know, can I do have a, you know, a controversial opinion, you know, maybe that you, maybe seven to 10, you don't have to have 200 people or 500 people. You don't have to have my model or, you know, some of my mentors models, but if you don't have a team of people to rely on more than one, because that one person leaves, you're screwed. You know, you don't have a business. And uh, another book plug for new agents would be the E Myth Revisited, which yeah, is. E -myth, a, yeah, yeah, that E Myth. And there's actually. It's a great one. E -myth, mm -hmm. uh, real estate version, the E Myth for real, the real estate agent on my bookshelf yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that awesome. was one of my favorite. Um, so you've got a team, you've got 40 people, you're leveraging, you know, this different skill sets, and you do a disc profile and all these guys, uh, which I, I recommend. I love disc profiles because um, otherwise you're, you're trying to put people in positions they may, they won't succeed at if you really don't, don't understand their motivations and ways of thinking. Um, I, in the intro, was telling J Jasmine that we're, I'm seeing a lot of buyer fatigue amongst the clients of my team uh, here in the Atlanta market. Mm -hmm. um, are you seeing that in, in Phoenix and Scottsdale oh, yeah. area? And, and, and what, what, oh, yeah. what do you tell your it's team just, that, that's, that they may have agents? Is, yeah. It, it's, uh, what we're going to see is we, when we, I say we hit the inflection point, you know, we, um, 
every market's going to be a little different. So knowing your market first and foremost, um, there are like we here at Phoenix have a unique access to the Cromwell report, which is just all the numbers on our market. We need to know how many active supplies, how many under contracts, um, how, how many closings per month. Uh, are those closing which segments of price ranges are buyers buying in? For here in Phoenix right now, I, we have a lack of, a, not that housing isn't affordable, but we have a lack of affordable housing, including a lack of supply. But that supply measure, knowing exactly where it is and what demographics are growing, um, is something that is essential for me to be a market expert. Now, Zillow has tools or Altos Research or other tools out there. I think the Zillow tool they just launched is pretty cool for agents outside of the Phoenix area. But you have to know your market numbers, know those sales, know what, what supply, know what possibilities, know what strategies are available. Know about the economics, interest rates, where are we going? If you're not, you don't have to be a loan officer, but you have to know these things. And um, with this, knowing what we're going up against, you know, knowing that like inflation's here a little bit higher in Arizona, I think it's approaching 9% and uh, rates are in the fives. We're not going to see the threes and fours, but we also have to look at the other side, sellers. Now I bought my house two years ago for about 800,000. It's worth 1.8. I wouldn't pay 1.8 for it right now, but I have a 2.2% mortgage. I'm not living in my dream home today, but do I, can I ever sell that house? No. Nope. And also on top of it, would I want to sell my house and do it like a like almost downward trade. It's a, it takes a lot for me to be motivated. Now, what sellers are motivated? Knowing what sellers are motivated is going to help you identify better opportunities for your buyers. And um, setting expectations. Are you just going and showing them the house and asking them, tell me what you think, and then relying on the search update to for them to reach out to you? You know, like just, you know, kind of message for agents. I got this message five years ago and it's never been more relevant than today, but you agent, Mr. Mrs. Agent, um, you giving uh, MLS access to your home, uh, homes to your client is giving them access to homes they already have access to. So by giving them like an MLS search and relying on that email that goes out and, oh, whenever they find a house, well, no, that's not the way it works. You have to be proactive in identifying. So having those really important conversations and, and expectations up front of this is the new norm. This is what we're going against. Like are they're right now probably feeling things, right? Like feeling frustrated, feeling alone, feeling scared. They're right. Like identify with their feelings because we are in a more emotional market right now. We're more emotional. Let's check ourselves at the door. Are we leading with fear or do we have plans in place? And you know, for every challenging market, the more challenging it is, the more opportunities there are. And the more opportunities there are for you to stand above the rest of the competition and earn your unfair market share. So if you're able to step back with that buyer, have a true consultation, just like you would with a seller. We used to do that all the time, religious about it. And I'll say we got away from it, but we're getting back to it and having those, um, those but in all of this craziness, you know, all the low supply and there are opportunities and identify them. And then when you deliver it, like, yes, buyer, this is what's going on in the market. This is the interest rate. Yes, it is competitive. Good thing for buyers is we've hit the inflection point. So it's going to be a little bit less harder for buyers as we go through this. It's going to be a little bit less easy for sellers as we go through this. But you are the professional. You have your value proposition. And with that, you know, client of mine that I want to earn your referrals and be a client for life, you know, um, this is my strategy. This is what I'm going to do to put you into the best possible position for long your long-term real estate goals and so, your long-term. Yeah. yeah. So uh, a question for Jasmine here. So I have a client very similar to Jennifer's situation here, 2.25% um, interest rate on their primary and doesn't, doesn't really want to sell it because that's such a great interest rate, uh, mm -hmm. which obviously a lot of people that are in this situation, uh, they're, they're going to have to get almost double their interest rate on their next purchase. And so they just stay where they're at, which obviously adds to the low supply. Um, but there's another option for me, right? We'll rent it let's out. Say, you can rent it hey, out. Sell it right now. And you're trying to sell me. There's another option for me, right, Alan? <laughs> so like, am I living in my dream home today? 
I already said no. Yeah. I'm not. Right. Is there another option for me maybe to build a house, you yeah. know, on land? The, you know, I know an area that there's a perfect spot. Um, could I rent my home out, Airbnb? I already do that. So yes, yeah. I know I can. Or even if I want to take less risk, can I rent my home out and have really good cash flow? Taking the American dream and just like utilizing it a little bit more, you know? Yeah. yeah. And, I told my daughter the same advice. I'm like, hey, honey, uh, I, I was just pulling comps for dinner one night. I'm like, she bought in 2020. I'm like, hey, wanna, do you know what your home's worth? And she's like, I don't know. Zillow said 375. She bought it at 300. I go 425, 450 all day long. But bad news is you can't sell it. Because of your interest rate, this is right. what you do. Take a HELOC out, buy in Tempe, because that's where you want to live, and rent this home out. This is your Airbnb value pro approximately. And this is what you could rent it for long term if you don't want to take that much risk. Right. And, mm -hmm. you know, that's another path of another pathway we could pro provide our clients by. And we might not uh, be the expert there, but we have a property manager. We have other referrals, that, you know, that we have. Um, I have a third party source that gets Airbnb valuations within 24 hours, you know, so we can give them a valuation for their home. We could provide an offer within 24 hours um, and shop it and give them the best investor offer. So whatever strategy they pick, they know they have choices. They know they have options and which one's the best for them. Yeah, I like those options. Uh, mm -hmm. Jasmine, as a mortgage lender, is it uh, I, some of the advice I, I'm getting is, hey, your price went up in value. You might as well get a HELOC and then take that HELOC to use it as a down payment and then rent out or use one of these options mm -hmm. Jennifer just ran. Or is there anything else that, that you would maybe recommend to people in that situation? Because I, I get it, a low interest rate, it, it, it's tough to give up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's you know, if you if you can sell the property, you know, it's a, it is a really good time to sell still, right? Yeah. And so just because your home right now is worth 1.8 million, you know, we don't know that the market is going to stay at that place, right? It might it might go down to 1.7, 1.6, you know, as as we start writing out the market. So is it a good idea to pick if you owe 800 and um, you have a million dollars worth of equity, like you said, wouldn't it could be a good idea to take that million dollars and put it as a down payment on your on your next home type of thing, right? So that's that's Everybody. one of the but, and but everything's then, different, yeah. Yeah, but like that I, HELOC I, would, would not mess up your interest rate, right? You would want to do that right, HELOC, the HELOC you know, cash out rate five, yeah. If you it wanted to keep where. the property, right? Yes, exactly. Right. Yeah, it depends where too. Like I, I sold um, my original house last year that I bought. Um, it was flawed inventory. Back to busy road, deferred maintenance. I knew we were hit, hitting the height of the market. I wanted to also take advantage of the capital gains, so I sold. But um, you know, maybe in my position, you know, it does. It might make sense to sell because of maybe the location it's in. Maybe the location is not appreciating as fast. Maybe it's not. Maybe by redirecting that and capital to somewhere else, because I, I don't believe prices are going to go down. Maybe they might go not this year, not next year, but maybe mm -hmm. the year after they might slide. But long term, you never lose, right? Like, mm -hmm. so if you go back to your long term strategies, if you mm -hmm. don't want a landlord, there are headaches involved, like. If you are really risk adverse, just pick the the best long term plan for you, you know. But um, for me, you know, I'm Irish, so I'm a little more risky, and I like to play the real estate. Game. So I would be a different avatar than maybe somebody you're with. And depending on like not just your market, but your sub markets, and then depending if you're in California versus New York versus Texas, Florida, they're all different population trends. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm on your Facebook page and there's a quote on here that I like, and this, this actually spoke to me when I, we were interviewed Russ, uh, Russ, uh, Seligman in a previous episode, I said, um, cause to me, when I, I always approach real estate, it was like, I just want to have the most knowledge and the way I learn is by doing. So I wanted to do my own new construction so I could learn that my own rent, rentals and my own Airbnb real estate. Cause if I'm going to give advice, I need to have done it myself. And I've always come from, um, knowledge, uh, first approach. But um, I, I think I may be switching things a little bit up based on, and your, your quote nails it as, uh, right here where it says, um, Jennifer, nobody cares how much you know until they know how much you care. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I, I think that's true. I think in this market, um, you caring about them, you making them feel comfortable, like you said, uh, very emotional beings on both sides, the buyers, the sellers, 
even the agents themselves. But just showing that you care uh, is, is, I think, a mark, a, a greater mark of success. Um, probably generates way more referrals than uh, knowing everything under the sun about real estate. And um, wonder, you know, how, how do you live that and, and teach that? Well, my number one core value, um, it's who I am as a person, because I'm just the most curious person you might ever meet. Um, so when I, if I have dinner with you, I'm going to probably ask you a lot of questions about yourself and your family. And, but anyways, uh, leading with curiosity. So that um, that insatiable like hunger for not just knowledge, but to apply that knowledge. And uh, there's an Italian word called demonstrionzia where it's you commit to a lifelong journey of, of learning, right? So learning-based curiosity and not only willing, you demonstrate it. And, you know, sfumato, you know, which means to embrace ambiguity, paradox, and duality. So you're embracing the uncertainty and you're willing to demonstrate it time and time again through either failures and through, um, and through successes. But you will have more failures the more, you know, for, for each, like, one success everybody sees from the outside, there were like 4,000 fails on the inside. So just know that failure is a part of the process. But what can you change? Because yeah. you are the captain of your own ship. You can't, you can't control the inflation. You can't control the market or supply or builders or your competitors, but you can control you. So in what you can control, what can you control for that experience? Mm -hmm. yeah. No, I like that. And um, I, Jasmine, I feel like you li live that too. Like you, you, you're really caring with your clients and, and they, at least that's the feedback I get when I send them yeah. away. Yeah. I mean, I feel like that's just one of those, one of those things that, that makes it, you know, that's like when you care about people, they're going to feel it. They're going to feel loved. It's just something you, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's just in everything, in everything you do. And I, and I kind of have this feeling, it's kind of interesting, like, yes, it's, it's another Zoom call with a client, but it's also that exact same Zoom call with a client can be so impactful if you're 100% willing to give yourself to that moment, to be present with those people. And that's, I think that, you know, especially like you were saying in, in this time and age, like giving somebody your attention your full attention, people can feel that because everybody's always half listening, half distracted, half things are plinging at us. And so taking that 30 minute conversation with your client and not doing anything but but completely focusing on them, I I know that people can feel that. They, and, they feel uh, yeah. that they're special. And there's a great Maya Angelou quote along these lines. I've learned that people will forget what you said People will forget what, what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. So, uh, can yeah, I do a, one more quote? Because I love yeah, all this. Yeah. You know, Socrates <laughs> said, you know, we have two ears and one mouth for a reason. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I, remind my kids that. I have to remind myself that. But when you listen, like truly actively listen, mm -hmm. you will hear things that you would have never heard. You know, if you were just trying to think about the next thing to say or hurry up, sign on the dotted line, you know. Like when you are there and people see you eye to eye contact and they can see you're really, truly like with a servant's heart, like wanting to see what, you know, who they are, where they can see themselves, where they're taking their families, like what's important to them. They will know, they will feel it. And it, it's through our, you know, just our body or energy that we put out. Yep. I, I love that. And I, especially in, in this crazy market and, and buyer fatigue, I, I keep coming back to that, um, you know. I, I want to mention that and keep referring to it because that's what we need to feel that our clients are feeling right now is, hey, they're frustrated. They definitely hate real estate investors. Uh, they definitely hate all people with all cash uh, offers. All cash buyers, yeah. Yeah, all cash buyers. Uh, um, they, they hate that they feel like no matter what they do, they can't win. I'm sure they. It's sometimes I would imagine they're, they're, 
who can they blame? Oh, I'm going to blame my real estate agent. I, I, the reason I'm not winning this is because I don't have a real estate agent. And I'm hearing stories of people trying to swap around real estate agents that mm. to overcome. Like, I, I just want to go on a different ride. Let's, let's just see, you know, I've tried everything. I've done everything. My real estate agent said I've waived the contingencies I've waived the appraisal and I still don't have it. Uh, it must be the real estate agent. Like, cause they can't, mm -hmm. they can't imagine it's, it's, that's just the market. Everyone's going through this. You're going to have the exact same spirit experience with another agent. So, um, you know, it's, this is a very real feeling out there that, that, um, you know, and having those conversations up front, yeah. you know, so it's not like you're just caught by surprise, you know, and they don't, I'd say we've gotten away as an industry, but like we can, we have the, we have the option when we know things to change you know, and to have these conversations up front. So they're not surprised. So we have a strategy and the strategy is one that makes sense. You know, like for me, like just being in static, I know there are certain like cash buyer uh, sellers that we could walk all over right now yeah. <laughs> in negotiation land for our buyers. One of my, mm -hmm. my media managers buying her second home, following my advice, um, and she got her appraisal came in $20,000 lower on this particular company. So, you know, there is a lot, like if we were true experts, I know it's crazy. I know it's frustrating. Like you might've gone through, you know, you might've already gone through 10 agents before me and you might be tempted to pick back the phone back if we don't win this offer. But let me tell you what I'm going to do. And you outline it through your value proposition. And if you don't know, you know, we'll share it. You know, we'll sh I share, openly share ours, make it yours. I'm like, you know, it is your value proposition. It is what it is. And tell them, like, even beyond that, what's on paper, because there's an art and a science, you know, that goes into negotiating. And, you know, you can unpack your own unique negotiating plan because we all have ours, you know. And, you know, what are you doing to, you know, like, make sure the seller sees your offer, you know, make sure that the agent on the other side friend them. This is a small industry. It's why, like, Loving and kindness goes a long way. Videos, that you, there are so many things that you can do to position your buyer where we have stories of time after um, time where buyers like my own daughter, want, she had a cash offer $20,000 above her and they picked ours. Now, of course, we have all the other stories of the buyers that didn't, you know, too. So I'm not guaranteeing that, but by being proactive, by being proactive with the other agents, having things like appraisal packages ready for as a buyer's agent, you know, you can put your your buyer into the best possible position. And I know because I won out offers all the time on buying my first home and second home and third home. And it, I had very little to offer as far as experience and money went. Yeah, no, I, I think that's leveraging those relationships, having to make it seem like it's going to be a super easy contract, even though there's a mortgage involved, um, mm -hmm. leveraging all those relationships. Um, those of you tuning in, we, uh, thank you so much. Please like and subscribe, uh, Agent Upgrade. We love your reviews. Uh, Jennifer, any sort of, um, if people want to get in touch with you, follow you, you're, 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 you do a really good job online. You want to plug some of your social media channels? Yes, definitely at YouTube. I have been going uh, since 2009. So if you see some of my original videos, they look like they're from 1972. But I know I've been uh, active on my YouTube, active on um, Instagram, Facebook, and uh, you will see me a lot more active on TikTok. I do have a TikTok channel, but you will see me personally a lot more active strictly for the agent community. And then look for, if you're following me on these channels, I'll connect with you. If you want our agent newsletters that we send out every week, just telling everything that changes every week. We also mastermind if anyone's interested in joining one of our masterminds every Monday in the cloud, just DM me on Instagram and I'll get, we'll get connected. And it truly, I do have a servant's heart. Like I've been so blessed uh, by so many people who have helped me, the dead people, like the Greeks, the people here that are living, like my, my mentors, the, the team behind me, you know, the team ahead of me. So you guys, awesome. So thank you so much. I really appreciate this. It's an honor to uh you'll get two you. new yeah, you'll get two new followers from uh the House of AC and that uh, jazz. <laughs> we're, we're, we're both on uh TikTok and uh we're trying to grow our content. So uh uh definitely uh you, you've got two new followers in us. And if you're listening, follow all three of us, please. Uh we're we're doing the best we can, share all the content from this show, but also in our lives uh in the mortgage and real estate business. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in to Agent Upgrade. And uh, thank you, Jennifer Weiner, um, EXP, Scott Steele, and uh, appreciate you coming on and sharing your knowledge today. Thank you so much. Honor. Namaste.
Thank you for listening to the Agent Upgrade Podcast. If you are an agent looking for a new mortgage lender, start with Jasmine at jasmineteam.com. If you want to learn about real estate investing and working with investors, check in with Alan at thehouseofac.com. See you next time on Agent Upgrade.